dear students welcome back today we'll look at the same section of the syllabus the main steps in devising and implementing a research strategy we'll have three lessons where we'll concentrate on sampling we should look at different aspects of sampling we'll start by looking at the main concepts in sampling the choice of samples type of sample, random samples, which consist of simple random, stratified random, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, non-random samples, which would consist of snowballing, quota sampling, purposive and opportunity sampling. We'll also look at the issue of generalization from the point of view of the positivist and the anti-positivist. In the first lesson, we'll look at the terms and concepts that you should be familiar with when you study sampling. We will look at what is a sample, a population, sample frame, representative sample, significant characteristics and variables. What is a sample? and why sample we'll come back to this little later but to introduce you should understand that a sample is simply part of a group or a population why do we sample it is not possible to study a large group therefore Researchers find ways in which they may study a smaller group. This is called a sample and this smaller group will help them understand the whole population they want to study. It is not therefore necessary to study the whole population when a sample can give you valid information. Let us take an example to illustrate what is a sample. Look at this picture. You have a stadium full of people. Suppose the sociologist wants to study what happened there on that particular day. Some aspects of the problems that might have incurred during the game. She can't go and ask every person in the stadium so therefore, she will have to find a few people from whom she can seek information. And those few people will be the sample. But for the time being, you should understand that any part of this population, any part of this group of people sitting in the stadium could be a sample. So it could be a small group on the left, on the right or on the opposite side. Just to help you understand that the sample is simply a part of the whole. Later we'll come to another aspect which is the representative sample. A sample therefore is simply a part of the whole. Any sample does not necessarily represent the population. In other words, any group of people taken at random from this stadium will not necessarily represent the views of all the people sitting in the stadium. To be more precise, a sample is any part of a population. You will notice that I have put some of the sentences in a rectangle. It indicates the definition of a particular concept. We also use the term population. You should remember that we are not referring to the population of a country. In sampling, population refers to the bigger group from which the sociologist is drawing the sample. Let's go back to the same example we took of the stadium. In this case, the population is all those 
present for the match on that day. We are not referring to the population of the country. We looked at sample and population. There is another concept that you should be aware of. Sample frame. A sample frame refers to all those who form part of the population the sociologist is interested in. In other words, everybody who would potentially form part of the population. That is, all those present for the match on that day. It's like framing them and say this is the limit within which we are going to draw our sample. Let us now take an example from the schools. Suppose we are interested in a sample of pupils or students in full-time education. In Mauritius, it can refer to those in private or state schools. Therefore, the population of pupils or students will refer to all those in either a pre-primary, primary or secondary school who are in full-time education. You note that we have not included students in the tertiary sector in the universities. We are not referring also to the population of the country, nor to all the population in education, but only those we are interested in. Therefore, the population for us means students from age 3 to 18 or 20, provided they are still in full-time education. So by now you should understand what we mean by a population in the context of sampling. Let us now look at another important concept in sampling representative sample. You should have understood by now that if we just take any group of people from the population, that is any sample, it need not always represent the whole population. But there are ways in which we can draw a sample so that it represents the population we are interested in. That is, we can draw it in such a way for it to represent the whole population in terms of certain significant characteristics. For instance, in terms of sex, age, social class or level of education, for instance. We will look at this in more detail in a few minutes. All scientists use samples and sampling to carry out their work. Let's take this example of the doctor taking a sample of blood from a human body. He can just take a little bit of blood, a few millimeters from any part of the body and that blood will represent all the blood in the body. He need not take blood from the arm, from the back, from the leg, because blood taken from the arm will represent all the blood in the body. But it is not so straightforward when it comes to a sample in the social sciences. Let us go back to the example of the stadium and ask ourselves what would be a representative sample of the population who watched the match. Can you take some time and list the characteristics of a sample of those at the stadium? It should include people who support each of the teams and what else?
Well, people who come to the stadium to watch a match would include those who support each team. You have to make sure that you look at people of different age groups, people of different social classes, different gender, and there may be other such variables. All these must be represented in the sample if we want the sample to represent the characteristics of all the people who were at the stadium on that particular day. In other words, the sociologist has to ensure that the sample contains members of all the different groups present at the stadium. Then only the sample will represent the population that is those present at the stadium. Let's now look at another important term, significant. Let's list the significant characteristics of a representative sample of those at the stadium. We said earlier that there should be supporters from each team, people of different age groups, social class, sex, manager or representative of each team, for instance. But do you think that we should take, for instance, the color of the eyes or the hair of those present to make a representative sample? Obviously, no. The sociologist should not think of taking the color of the hair or the eyes because such characteristics would not make a difference in the way people think. Rather, age and social class and other factors would be more significant. This is why you should understand that we should look at the significant variables, that is, factors which will make a difference in the way people respond. So let us again look at the concept we introduced, representative sample for instance. A sample is representative when it is drawn in such a way as to represent the population in terms of the significant characteristics or variables. We are refining this definition because you just learned about a new concept significant variable. What is a variable? A variable come from the word vary. In other words, any characteristic that varies from people to people, group to group, or place to place, and so on. For instance, a variable would be age sex, level of education, social class, because each person is different in terms of age, maybe different in terms of level of education, or social class, or sex, and therefore we have to take these differences into consideration. In sociology we call them variables. We also said it should be significant variables. The sociologist who wants to have a representative sample has to ensure that the sample is made up of these significant characteristics. That is, people present in the samples come from for instance, in the school from all grades, from both sexes, from different social classes, and so on. And the term significant, a significant variable, is one which is important for the study and which will make a difference on how people behave in a group.
look at the sentences in a rectangular box. These are important definitions that you should understand and remember. So in this lesson we looked at sample, population in the context of sampling, representative sample and significant characteristics or variables. It might appear to be a few but these are very important concepts that you should understand so as to understand the whole idea of sampling. Let's now look at some of the questions that you might get on this section of the syllabus. As usual, a two marks question should be a simple definition. A four marks question should be a definition plus example. And an eight marks question should have more explanations, at least two different ideas clearly explained. The questions could be, what is a sample to box? What is a population with respect to sampling? Four marks. What is a sampling frame? Four marks. What do you understand by the term variable? Four marks. Explain what you understand by representative sample? Eight marks. What is a significant variable? 8 marks. We have reached at the end of this first lesson on uh, sampling. I remind you that the pictures and illustrations taken from, for this presentation come from open source upslash.com. Thank you very much for your kind attention. See you next time.